Hey guys, we're going to review all of the various homework questions. Now, if you're thinking to yourself, uh, Mr. Erico, I, I, don't, I don't need to see all of the homework questions. I only need to see number 13. You know what? That's great. Skip to somewhere else in the video. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through them in order. Okay? Now, what I thought I would present right at the beginning, though, is the following. A list of sort of the steps that you, that you ought to follow for each of the various questions, right? So if you got stuck, right, it's entirely likely, for example, that min number one, maybe you didn't, I don't know, draw a diagram. I've been telling you the whole year, right, draw a diagram, draw a diagram, always draw a diagram. And if you don't, then you're probably going to get stuck. All right, the next thing that you got to do as you're trying to solve the problem is decide if it's an isolated or a non-isolated system, meaning do you start with delta E equals zero or delta E equals work. If there aren't any non-conservative forces there, then you're going to go with delta E equals work. On the other hand, if it seems like it's only like gravity or springs, then you've got a situation where it's an isolated system, right? Only conservative forces act. All right, next thing that you'd want to do is decide what types of energy exist at various positions. So you'll see me do that for each of the questions. Your options are pretty much just these three, right? Uh, if it's moving, there's kinetic energy. If it's higher than the lowest position, then there's gravitational potential energy. If there's a compressed spring, then there's elastic potential energy. All right, and then plug in and solve. All right, that's, that's the part where there's algebra. And then lastly, if you do get stuck, like ever, go look through the notes packet. There's probably an example similar to the one that you have a question about. Uh, if you look through it, you may discover there's none exactly like it. That's normal. I'm not going to give you the exact same question in your notes that you're going to do in your homework, right? It's got to require a little bit of extra thinking on your part if you're going to learn something new from it. For number three, it's talking about taking a block, fairly small block, only 0.25 kilograms, and putting it on top of a 5,000 newton per meter spring. That's an enormous spring, by the way. And then it's pushed downwards so the spring is compressed by 0.1 meters. All right, now this is not saying that if you put this tiny little block on it that it just sinks down a whole 0.1 meters. That would actually be a bit much to expect. What's going on is the spring is actually being pushed downwards with the block on top of it. So this is like a spring-loaded cannon or something like that. So if you started with, say, a spring that looked like this, that's a fantastic spring right there, all right, and then you compress it downwards, right, push those coils together with your block on top of it, and then you release it, it's going to go flying upwards, all right? And so as it moves upwards, you know, it's, it's going to have kinetic energy that it's getting from the spring pushing it, right? Um, but eventually all of that kinetic energy is going to turn into just gravitational potential energy. So if you had to summarize the energies at the two positions you're talking about, down here at the bottom it has elastic potential energy. Up here at the top, it has, now if you were thinking, oh, kinetic, because it's movement, not at the very top, right? Assuming that it's firing it straight up at the very top, it's going to have a speed of zero. However, it is much higher than where it started, so it's going to have gravitational potential energy. All right, and then it wanted to know how far upwards it goes above the point of release. Point of release is way down here at the bottom, right? So they're measuring the height from here all the way up to there, okay? All right, now this would be a more complicated question if they asked something like, what is its maximum speed, or what is its speed when it's some distance above the ground or something like that? because then you'd have kinetic energy to mix in there, right? So at any position here in the middle, it'll have some gravitational potential energy, some kinetic energy, right? But at the very top, it's only got gravitational potential energy. All right, I went a little bit out of order, I suppose, right? We were supposed to decide first, is this isolated or non-isolated? 
I'm going to go with probably isolated. There's not really a surface for it to rub against to you know, give you work being done by friction. There's only air resistance in the way, and usually we get to ignore that. So it's going to be delta E equals zero. All right, so that means that the final energy and the initial energy are equal. The final energy is the gravitational potential energy. The initial energy is the elastic potential energy. All right, so that means that if it has like 50 joules of elastic potential energy at the bottom, at the moment that it's released, then that's how much gravitational potential energy it's going to have when it reaches its maximum height. All right, so for UG, we'll have MGH for elastic potential energy, 1 half kx squared. If you're not sure what goes where, 0.1 meters is, well that's a distance, that's not the height though, right? You're trying to solve for the height, so that's going to be your compression, right? It was pushed downwards 0.1 meters. The spring constant is that 5,000 newtons per meter, the mass is 0.25 kilograms, and of course g is g, so the only thing you don't know is h. So assuming that you plug everything in correctly, you should be able to roll forward and get the right answer. All right, on to the next question.